Hi guys, it's Tara again. Today we're back for another Mail Art Monday. So today, again with Viva Las Vegas stamps, I have a super, super fun Halloween envelope to show you. And today I'm actually going to do it as a postcard. On the Facebook group for Viva Las Vegas stamp groupies, they actually are having um, a swap. They try to do one every couple months, I believe. And the swap is for fall harvest themed postcards. You could do it open interpretation, anything fall themed, if it's in, you know, fall, harvest, whatever you want. So I'm going to do this interpreted as a postcard. So today I'm going to show you how to turn one of my mail art envelopes into the postcard, which is really pretty much the same, except the dimensions for the postcards are four by six. So you'll see they're just slightly different, a little shorter, a little longer, not a big deal. And you can make your postcards any size you want. I think for this swap, it is a minimum of four by six. But feel free to let your imagine run, imagination run wild with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, I already have all of the masks cut out for this and I'll show you here. And you'll see I did rip the little stick off my witch's broom, but that's all right, it happens. And then for, if you wanted to do this as an envelope, like I did, the only difference is I still used that miniature playing card for my envelope space. So that's really the only big difference. So let's go ahead and get started. To do this, I will have all of the links on the direct blog post on both Viva Las Vegas stamps and my personal blog. So you'll be able to get those anywhere. And I want to start with, well, we'll start with the moon. We can do the moon or the witch. They're both the focal images, but I'm going to start working from the top over down to the bottom. And today you can use any black ink you want. Today I chose to use my VersaFine in onyx black. I'm just going to pick up my stamp. As long as you have a good black ink, usually if I'm going to be smearing ink color like I'm going to do on this, I don't often use VersaFine just because it does stay wet a little bit longer, but I like the crisp look it gives me. So for the detail on this fence, I think I want to go with it. And it didn't stamp very dark, but that's alright. And I've got my little mask with that sticky repositionable tape. I'm just going to stick that down. And then I know that... I want the fence to come over in this corner, so I want the little witch to be kind of in the middle of this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and switch back to my archival ink because it didn't, the other one didn't stamp as dark as I wanted. I probably need to refill it. So let's get that inked up and place her just a little off from the center. And I'm leaving a little room under the moon in case I want to go back in and add a quote. I think I'm going to. I don't know what I want to add yet. I've got a couple different ones and they have so many fabulous Halloween quotes over there. It's not even, it's, it's so hard to decide. It really is. All right, now I want to go ahead and put the mask on for my witch. And again, like I said, I ripped this and really this broomstick, you don't have to mask off at all. And you know what? I won't mask it just to show you guys that in case it'll save you guys some cutting. I don't know. Because it's solid black, it doesn't hurt anything. So let's go ahead and ink up our awesome row of pumpkins along this fence. I love the stamp. I was so excited when I finally ended up ordering this. I've just... It's so hard to decide which stamps you want. Because, you know, I want them all. My wish list on there, I think, has like 500 stamps in it. So, and if you guys haven't been on the site, you need to check it out. You can add your own wish list on there. So when you get, you know, time to order or money or holidays when things go on sale, it is perfect to just go on there and order during that time. And you can, don't have to hunt through everything again. You can find it. So I kind of went through all the categories and just added everything that I loved. And slowly but surely, I'm adding everything to my collection. Yay! Alright, so we've got this stamped on here. 
I want to show you this. So what I did is I positioned it so that this light post kind of showed through her and there's a little pumpkin back there. If I would have stamped it all the way aside I would have lost that between the behind her broomstick which would be fine but it doesn't give you as much depth. So that's one thing to think about when you're positioning your stamps is you want something to show through behind if you want it to really have that depth like they're behind behind the witch like she's standing in front of it. Now you'll see I didn't push down very hard around my mask so we're just going to go ahead and grab that trusty Versamark marker again and just kind of smear that ink right over there to give it a little shadow. Nobody will ever know. That's right. Except for you guys. You guys all know that I seem to mess that up a lot. But that's okay. I actually did good on the first envelope though. Alright, now that we've got that, today I'm actually going to throw you guys off a little bit. I'm going to use some awesome inks from Memento. Today I am using three of the Memento Lux. They are Love Letter in red, an orange, oh I won't show you orange yet because it's a different one of their collection. This one is the yellow that is Dandelion, and I've got a blue in Pear Tart. And then this is also by Memento, but this is their Radiant Neon, and it's called Electric Orange. And it's actually Tuscuno. Tuscuno? I'll let you guys... Uh, there we go. But I believe they're all by the same company. They just have a couple different marketing brands. So I've got this down. I want to kind of... I want to show you. I guess I'll show you this first. So in the bottom, I kind of made the bottom look like... The ground they're standing on and so I want to kind of make this darker well actually I'll show you in reverse we're gonna start everything with a base coat of orange so I've got my little sponge here and this is a different texture than the distress ink I usually use so you're gonna feel like your ink is I don't want to say I'm trying to think of a good text like the way to explain the texture to you guys if you haven't used it, your coating of your paper almost feels soft afterwards. It's got a very smooth texture and you can feel it on top of the paper still after. Like where the, dress, the Distress ink soaks in, this actually sits on top of paper. Maybe that'll help. So I'm just kind of getting a nice base coat down here. On my witch, I did cut out a little space in her arm. That sleeve, I think her sleeves are actually meant to be bellowy where they hang down. I wanted a space so that again it showed some depth. So I just kind of imagined where her sleeve could end if she had, you know, tighter sleeves on. And just worked that in so you'll notice that little triangle once I take this off. So just kind of, you don't have to be real perfect. This is your base layer. So you just want to add a nice light coat of color. A little bit of everywhere. And you're gonna notice it's kind of looks like a I want to say almost a spray painted effect. Ooh. I need to restick some more sticky on there. And the final stamp you'll see at the end that I have the dots that created the ground effect. I will add that after I've got all my colors where I want them. It doesn't really matter when you add it. I just, I don't know, just like to do it that way. So I've got my orange on here. So we're gonna move that out of the way. And now I'm gonna add some red at the bottom. But before I do that, I want my pumpkins to remain orange. So now I'm gonna take my mask, and when you cut this mask out, I did not cut out all these itty bitty ones. Nobody will know. So just cut out your main element and then starting at your big ones. It'll save you some time especially like this one where you really don't even see all of them. So we'll just stick my mask down there. Nope. Got it. It's not one to stick, so I've got a little bit of this repositionable glue stick. This one is by Elmer's Craft Bond, so I'm going to stick that on there. You can tell I've played with these a bunch already. I'm losing my stickiness. Alright, so we've got it tacked on there good enough. Lined up. 
And again, you really wouldn't have to mask this little tiny one or cut this little tiny one off because it's mostly black. And at the end, I actually take a white marker into that. I don't know, I just kind of have it, just like the little broomstick. So now we've got this masked off, now we wanna add in our ground. I'm gonna go back and use the Memento Lux in Love Letter. So we're gonna use that red. And these are so juicy, guys. I, you will love them. If you haven't tried them, they are so much fun. And just kind of do a light coat. You can go in different, you can sponge it, you can brush it. I just wanna add a little texture so I don't want it to be real solid. And just a little bit of the stuff goes a long ways, guys. Like you can see, I still have a ton in my sponge. So I've got that there. And I forgot to grab out my mask I use for clouds, so forgive me. We're gonna grab that, which is just a torn piece of paper. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of red up here. Well, I've got some on here still. So just put your paper down and gently swipe up. And move it around and kind of do the same thing while you've got this on here. I really can put the lid on that now. So you can see we're already starting to get some depth. We've got some clouds in here. And I don't want too much red. But I'm gonna add a little border on this ground now. Like she's down here in a nice fog. Now that I've got the ground laid out, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that dot stamp that I have. It's a nice texture stamp. Oh, I love the set. If you guys have not seen any of my blog posts about this set of stamps, it's a whole they have a whole set of texture stamps and they are amazing. Anything that adds texture to my images, I just I love them. I can't help it. So I'm just adding some Versamark black here. And I'm just going to gently go kind of all over. Throw a couple spots in. And this is just going to give it that appearance of ground. Takes the eye and breaks it up a little bit. So you guys can see that. I need to clean up this mess. Back in my postcard's got some fun color also. All right. Now we've got our ground cover down. I want to add in some yellows and blues to make that sky more haunted. So let's start with the yellow, which is dandelion. And do the same thing you did with the red, just trying to move it around so you're getting it in different areas. You can run your paper up, down, up or down, it doesn't really matter just so that you're varying your colors, moving it here and there, a little bit everywhere. Sorry if you hear my dog whining. My husband's mowing the yard and he wants to be out there. So we've got some yellow in here. You can kind of see that from here. And now we're gonna finish it off with our blue, which is called Pear Tart. here where you guys can hope they'll keep this in the frame for you guys sorry and the blue you don't want to go too overzealous with you just want to do your hints don't be afraid whoops I get way too much color on there guys so we'll use the side to sponge it off like I said these are super juicy and I started right on the paper instead of starting on my card so just a tiny tiny Oops, I lost my mask. Oh well. Tiny bit of this will go a super long ways. And I want some up here, I think. And you can see I've used this for spraying also. I think I use this thing for everything. It's a nice piece of cardstock. Use a little more over here, I think. Now I'm trying to be careful with my, when I click, hit that mask, it kind of went flying across the room, so. And let's do a little over here. 
And now if you want that cloud to actually go across the moon, you can do that too. So actually we'll do that. We'll bring a little cloud here across it. And it'll just give you a hint of color. So as if it's coming right across this little face. All right, guys, it is time for the reveal. And then I'm going to show you something else really fun that I did. A I'm going to do different on these postcards. So first, let's take cover my ink up. Take off the mask. Start with our fence and our little witch here. All right. And you can see here we have this little white frame around it. I have that in my original also. I like it because it helps them pop. If you don't, we'll just go ahead and cover it up on here to show you. You can just take your sponge, use your leftover color without covering it completely. It will help it to fade in, but still have a little bit of a different color so that she still pops forward. To complete this, like I said, I cut the witch's sleeve. So I just drew a little line there. I took my, I'll take my white jelly roll pen. I don't know if you guys can see that and add a couple little highlights here on the fence, maybe a little highlight on the pumpkin here and there. And then I'm going to put a little white in the little light back here. So there we go. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to put a quote here. I think I'm going to, but I don't know what one yet. So that's up to you guys, however you want to do it. But I will show you what I know that I want to do for these. So if one of you guys join the swap, you have something exciting to look forward to. On the back, I bought the cutest Halloween stamp from them the other day. And it's one of the postoids. Because I love mail art, you know I had to have some postoids. And I have several of them. But this Halloween one, I am in love with. I'm going to stamp it right on here. Make sure I get the top of the postcard. That's a pressure. Alright guys, look at this. The Frankenstein and monsters. Oh my goodness. Do you guys not love that? I'm probably going to have to color that in with some markers. You can use a postcard stamp here. And one other stamp I'm going to add. This is up to you guys. Because I am sending it in a swap, they go in an envelope to the people. So I'm sending a place postage stamp here. Post office will not mail without postage. And that's just for the fun of it. So... A lot of people don't know that they can mail it with things on the back, so the envelopes are in their decorated parts. And then I'll probably draw a little line across here. So they can still put their address, put your little note. So that's really it. There you guys have it. Sorry this video is so long. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Maybe this has inspired you to get creating for Halloween. I hope you guys join us on the swap. Again, it's the Facebook group Viva Las Vegas Stamp Groupies. And I will have direct links to purchase any of these stamps in the blog post down below and as well as my personal blog, The Crafty Sugar Addict. And thanks guys. I hope you come back and join us for the next one. Here soon there will actually be a couple other members of the Viva Las Vegas Stamp Design Team doing Mail Art Mondays. So make sure to join us on our blog. Thanks guys. Have a great day.